Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with another video. This time it's all on photosynthesis. Please remember, if you like the video, please drop it a like at the end. And if you could also subscribe to my channel, that would be a great help. Photosynthesis is an endothermic process, meaning that it requires energy from the external environment in order for the reaction to proceed. Now we know that the external energy uh, supplied for a plant is from sunlight. The energy from sunlight is used to break down the bonds in water and carbon dioxide and to reform them in order to make glucose and oxygen. This is a symbol equation for the reaction. Leaves are perfectly adapted for photosynthesis to occur and here we have a cross-section uh, view of a leaf. The leaf is full of air gaps and that's important because the air gaps allow uh, gases to move in between the leaf with ease. Also there are xylem uh, which allows uh, water to travel up to the leaves. And uh, here there's the palisade uh, layer and the palisade uh, mesophyll layer contains lots of chloroplast and this is the site of photosynthesis. Also inside the chloroplast is a substance called chlorophyll and the chlorophyll absorbs the sunlight and turns it into energy, that energy needed for photosynthesis to occur. Along with these clear adaptations, uh, we can also see about the leaf that it's got an incredibly large surface area. This large surface area means that more sunlight can hit the top of the leaf and that means that photosynthesis can occur uh, because of the fact it requires that sunlight to start. Once photosynthesis has made glucose, we need to look at how the plant uses that glucose. Use of glucose in plants is respiration. Just like in humans we respire, plants also respire. This is how they get their energy. Uh, energy needed for processes such as active transport. Active transport obviously is when they uh, get mineral ions from the soil. They need to get that mineral ions in so it requires energy. And respiration has basically the opposite word equation to photosynthesis. We're going to look at respiration in the next video. But it is oxygen plus glucose making carbon dioxide and water. Another use of glucose is that they turn the glucose into cellulose by chemical reaction. And cellulose is what's used to strengthen uh, cell walls of the plant cells. Some glucose is actually stored and it's stored in the form of starch. The reason why they uh, store it in starch and not just keep it is glucose is because glucose is soluble in water whereas starch is insoluble. And if it was just, uh, if they just stored the glucose directly, it could get absorbed into the water system of the plant and it could affect how that water uh, osmosis going into cells and uh, leaving cells. So it could really affect the water balance inside the plant. Now, uh, often uh, humans take advantage of the starch store of the plant because the starch form of the plant often comes in the form of a vegetable or is stored in a bulb. So if you think about it, we just get the starch back uh, from eating the potatoes or veg other vegetables. Plants use some of the energy photosynthesis in order to make amino acids, which are obviously important for the plant. It's by taking up nitrates and other minerals from the soil. And these amino acids are vital for the plant. They need to, them to form enzymes, and other proteins and the proteins are vital for that plant in order to carry out all the functions that it needs to. Uh, in areas where there is n nitrate uh, rich soil they get this through active transport however sometimes uh, the soil isn't rich enough and there's actually some carnivorous plants who will eat uh, other insects in order to get the nitrates they need. The last way uh, plants can use this glucose is they can convert it to lipids and lipids is just another energy store. Uh, you can often see uh, that the plant has converted some of the glucose into lipids because of the fact 
we get a lot of oil from vegetables and things like that. We are now going to look at factors that can affect the rate of photosynthesis and there's three, light intensity, temperature and carbon dioxide concentration. Now you might have noticed that in summer plants grow a lot quicker than in the winter. That is because of the fact that it's warmer and there's more sunlight for that plant. However, if either the light intensity, the temperature or carbon dioxide uh, concentration is controlled, these can limit the amount of photosynthesis that can occur. That's why these are all known as limiting factors, because they control the amount of photosynthesis that can occur. And if you were to look at the graphs of what happens when you increase one of these factors to the rate of photosynthesis, you get patterns like this. As the light intensity increases, so does the rate of photosynthesis until a certain point, okay? And this certain point is where the other factors are limiting the rate of photosynthesis. So the light intensity has increased the rate of photosynthesis, but at this point here, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air and the temperature, no more photosynthesis can occur at this point. The only way I could still increase photosynthesis further could be to change the temperature or increase the carbon dioxide concentration. With temperature, the graph looks a little bit different, okay? Temperatures, uh, not as much photosynthesis can take place because it's an enzyme-controlled reaction, and then it starts to increase until a certain point. However, once you go past this point, remember enzymes can become denatured at too high of a temperature and uh, this can result in that at too high of a temperature, no photosynthesis can occur as well. And the last one to look at is carbon dioxide concentration and it follows a similar pattern as light intensity. As the carbon dioxide uh, concentration increases, so does the rate of reaction until we get to the limiting factors of the other uh, light and temperature, they will limit the amount of photosynthesis that can occur. Now it's important to look at the units that I've got here as well. I make, make sure when you're drawing graphs you always include the units. Light intensity is often measured in lumens. Temperature is a degree centigrade and CO2 concentration here is measured in percent. If you're commercially growing uh, plants or vegetables in a greenhouse, it's important that you do know about the limiting factors uh, so that you can maximize the amount of revenue you can make from your plants. And greenhouses do this by controlling the amount of carbon dioxide, the temperature and light inside of a greenhouse. And the reason why they do all this is because of the fact the more, the more photosynthesis that occurs uh, equals the quicker uh, it grows and also the bigger it grows as well. Now it is not just the limiting factors that are controlled as well. The water intake is also controlled and they do this by not growing the plants in water itself. It's called hydroponics and in hydroponics they uh, create um, a water mix that contains all the nutrients that are needed for that plant. Uh, and therefore it doesn't need to get any externally from the soil. So as you can see, greenhouses are actually more complex than you actually thought, and it requires a lot of high-tech systems in order to carefully control the carbon dioxide temperature and lighting inside the greenhouse. So a lot of work does go, actually go into making your lettuce or tomatoes that you guys use on a daily basis. Now that is the end of the topic on photosynthesis. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please remember to drop it a like if you did and subscribe to my channel.